We are just one day away from the all-important New York primary. Donald Trump appears poised for an easy victory. According to our CBS News Battleground Tracker poll, Mr. Trump is leading his Republican rivals by 33 points. As for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton has maintained a 10-point lead over Bernie Sanders in her adopted home state. But anything can happen tomorrow because New York tends to see a very low voter turnout. Liz Plank spoke with potential voters about what keeps people from the polls. So many people I know, especially young people and like students, totally missed the deadline. Yeah. Even though they really wanted to vote, but, and they probably would have, but they missed the deadline or like didn't know how to do it. Do you have friends who missed the deadline and weren't able to do it? Yeah, yeah, my friend didn't register in time. Actually, a couple of them. It's, I think it's intentionally a complicated process where every state's got different rules. Some are open, some are closed, some are caucuses, different dates, things like that. Of course, we were at a Bernie Sanders rally, so one specific issue kept coming up. They, they make it hard for you to switch parties. Like, it's like six months in advance of the primary, which I think it's not really cool. I think they make it harder. He's right. The primary is closed to registered members of each party, and the date to change party affiliation was October 9th of last year, even though the primary is happening in April. So a lot of people on both sides of the aisle miss that date, including Donald Trump's own children. One of the most onerous rules in terms of registration, and it required us to register a long time ago, almost close to a year ago, um, and uh, and we we didn't do that. We found out about it sort of after the fact. And this makes it especially hard for independents who want to be part of the primary. Uh, I just switched over from independent, and when I heard Bernie was running uh, last fall, I immediately switched over because I saw, I looked it up. But I know a lot of people who are not going to be able to vote who want to. I think that that puts Bernie Sanders at a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, it's clear. Like, there's no question that the party system is set up to keep an outsider out, right? I think that's, like, abundantly clear. Everyone can see it. Uh, you know, like, the, the veil has been lifted, and we see what happens when an outsider tries to enter the highest office in the country. Like, there's no question. Our senior political editor, Steve Shigaris, and Vox senior correspondent, Liz Plank, have been following the primary races. You just saw Liz's piece there. So, Liz, uh, I love New York. Everybody loves New York. But what keeps <laughs> New Yorkers away from the polls? You heard people there saying that it's intentional. Yeah, you know, New Yorkers turn up for so much. Why aren't they turning up exactly. at the ballot box? Uh, I, I, I was shocked to see those figures. I mean, the, the state actually ranks 48 out of 50 in terms of its low voter turnout. So it's it's not doing well. And and, and it's getting worse with it, with the years. And, and the main reason, I mean, there's many reasons reasons, right, and a diversity of opinions on this, um, but there's not no early re registration and, and no same-day registration. Mm. So um, those things tend to impact voter turnout rates in states that have uh, brought on those policies, and, and New York hasn't because there's no secretary of election, so there's no one actually championing this issue. There's been a lot of bills, a lot of people have been trying to change this, um, but none of those bills actually become law. Steve, we know obviously that states have all these different rules. Uh, the question now is, what does the math look like? Could the fact that people are not able to register uh, in time actually affect the, the race tomorrow? And could it tighten between Clinton and Sanders? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, what we know in terms of the polls is that we, you know, these polls generally poll likely voters. So the numbers in the polls in terms of the difference between Hillary Clinton and Sanders are on the Republican side, Trump and the others. Uh, you got to assume that they're fairly accurate. They've been pretty accurate other than Michigan pretty much all season. Uh, and again, they're looking at likely voters. These are people who are likely to go out and actually vote. Um, in terms of whether we're going to see more or less turnout, I mean, what we've seen consistently this year is that on the Republican side, the turnout has been higher uh, from previous primaries. Uh, partly, it seems as, a, as if uh, their voters are much more excited about the candidates that are running. And on the Democratic side, they've been consistently down uh, from 2008, when, which is the last competitive primary uh, on the Democratic side. And, uh, you know, I don't want to draw any conclusions on that, but uh, I, I'm not going to just blame the voting uh, registration laws in New York State if the numbers go down on the Democratic side because they've been down pretty consistently all year. Mm. Uh, Senator Sanders spoke earlier on CBS this morning about the voter turnout and the fact that independents can't vote in New York's primary. Let's play that out. It's bad New York State election law. What it says to the many hundreds of thousands or more independents who would like to vote tomorrow 
for me or for anybody else, they can't participate. I think that that's wrong and that does hurt us. If the voter turnout is high, I think we are going to do very well. That's been the story of this campaign. Voter turnout low, we will probably not do well. Liz, is Senator Sanders putting a little bit too much emphasis on independence and their turnout? I mean, perhaps, but from what from, from the people that I spoke to at the Bernie Sanders rally, that issue did keep coming up. So there were a lot of people saying, I missed the deadline, just like Donald Trump's children, uh, to change from independent to, I mean, Donald Trump's children were trying to change to become Republican, but uh, people weren't able to sign up to be uh, part of the Democratic uh, closed primary process. So um, that is an issue. And, and, and even, you know, I spoke to, to one of Bernie Sanders supporters who said, I've been canvassing, volunteering for Sanders, but I cannot vote for him. Um, because, yeah, it was, it, was, it was last year that they had to make this decision. And a lot of people had to warm up to Bernie Sanders too. Uh, Hillary Clinton is well known amongst voters and, and Bernie Sanders, you know, some people may now want to vote for him and, and just have the, the, the deadline is completely passed. I'm sure that there were Bernie Sanders supporters that you spoke to whose minds were blown that they actually have something in common with Ivanka and Donald yeah. Trump Jr. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think that would have ever, yeah, they would have ever expected that happening. <laughs> All right, Steve, on the Republican side, our CBS poll suggests Donald Trump is going to dominate New York, but because, as you know, New York awards delegates proportionally, I wonder if Ted Cruz or John Kasich might be able to offer up any kind of a challenge. Well, it's not truly proportional. So what it is is there's a winner-take-all for 14 delegates statewide, and then there's a winner-take-all uh, possibly. Uh, this is winner-take-all possibly in both of these places, also in the congressional districts. And what that means is if you clear 50 percent of the vote, then you win all the delegates. So if Trump clears 50 percent statewide, he'll win all those 14. And if he clears 50 percent in each of the congressional districts, he'll win three in each of those congressional districts. If he doesn't get 50 percent, uh, it's proportional and statewide, but it's uh, in in the congressional districts, it's two to one. So even if he gets 48% uh, and say Kasich comes in second in a congressional district, he'll get two, Kasich will get one. So you look at, you look at the map, you look at the math, you know, right now, Trump is way ahead of these guys uh, in the polls. So there may be congressional districts here and there, or maybe statewide proportionally, uh, but there are not a lot of delegates statewide. So, yeah, could they pick off some delegates from Trump? Sure. That's going to be the big question going into tomorrow night, is how many delegates can they pick off? It's really, you know, at this point, every delegate is important for Trump because he's got to get to that 1237 number, but it's not like Trump's going to wind up with only half the delegates out of this unless the bottom falls out of this polling that we've seen uh, over the last few weeks. And Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, this is going to have to be the story going forward, at least in the next couple of days and weeks for Donald Trump, right? He's going to have to hit uh, at least a majority, if not in some cases, 60 percent of the vote if he expects to hit that 1237. Well, yeah, sure. But there's, there are several states where there's winner take all. So New Jersey, which is a fairly large state in terms of delegates, that's a winner take all state. So that's 100 percent or nothing, right? There's no 60 percent involved. So that helps the percentage. Uh, you go to a state like California, and again, it's a congressional district type situation is in New York. And so if he can do very well uh, in a lot of the congressional districts, he's going to pull more than, you know, 50 percent of, of the delegates there. So, yeah, is this going to go to June 7th? Likely, mm. most likely. Uh, the math is going to be very dicey leading up to that point. But he still has a mathematical chance to do this. He just has to perform well in really the biggest states and in as many states as possible between now and then. All right. Steve Shigaris and Vox senior correspondent Liz Plank. That was a great report, Liz. Thanks Thank for sharing you. it with us. Thank Thanks. You.